Over the last few weeks, I've been testing these, well, Kalb Life Epo 4 cells, uh, which I thought, looking at the data sheet, were probably the 60 amp hour version. And when I look and I've tested, well, this one, cell 2, start to volt, well, just over 2 volts, it was very low. Uh, charged it to 3.65 and it took 69.4 amp hours so I'm fairly confident that these are the 60 amp hour model and once again thank you to Nigel who kindly sent me 12 of these but if I'm going to replace my 12 volt lead acid battery bank with these Life Epo 4 cells well I'm going to need to think about cell balancing Regular viewers of this channel will know that I do have some experience of battery management systems and here's the DIY BMS which is working on my 7S 20P Lithium Ion 18650 pack which uh, is full of uh, 18650 cells out of laptop batteries and uh, this has been running now for well over a year here in the shed and uh, running very well. And this is version three of Stuart Pitaway's DIY BMS. Now for me, a fully fledged battery management system must have four key components. Firstly, it must balance the cells. That seems fairly obvious. That's probably its most critical and important role. Each of the separate cells in your battery bank should be kept at the same level to ensure that none of them are overcharged or undercharged. But there must also be over voltage um, protection on the whole pack and under voltage protection as well so that we do not over or undercharge the whole battery bank which could of course be well costly if you undercharge it and destroy the bank or well dangerous if you overcharge and the last element for me is monitoring i really like to monitor my battery bank and i like to monitor that remotely from the comfort of my sofa or when i'm out and about on my phone yeah the monitoring for me is a key part of the bms so on the lithium ion pack i have on the wall of the shed here with the diy bms connected well it is definitely balancing my pack that's absolutely correct um, and it's able to monitor the pack and i can do that over a web gui and uh, i can also upload the information to uh, InfluxDB and Grafana and see that on my mobile phone whenever I want when I'm away from home. Unfortunately over and under voltage protection wasn't really a feature in DIY BMS version 3. Yes yeah. each cell monitor would protect the cell from over voltage but there wasn't an overall over voltage protection the whole voltage of the pack uh, there's no way of switching off the charging if the whole pack's going over voltage or in fact under voltage but i do have that feature built into my solar charge controller obviously it stops charging if the whole pack gets to a point where it's over a parameter i've set and it also switches itself off entirely does that solar charge controller if we get into an under voltage situation and using the load output on that solar charge controller i can turn off the loads when this uh, when my cells go under voltage so although not a feature of the diy bms i was getting those features from another device now it's fair to say that the DIY BMS version 3 wasn't without a couple of issues. Now those issues weren't really a problem for me but I know there were for others. People had problems with the I2C communication between all the modules occasionally not working. If you connected these to a small lithium pack the uh, 
power consumption of the AT Tiny in the associated circuitry here was quite high so on smaller packs uh, this drained the packs a bit too aggressively again with my 7S20P packs not really a major issue. Also these modules don't work if they can't connect to the controller so if the uh, wires got nicked or for some reason the power to that controller was disconnected, uh, well, these would just sit there in a panic mode, flashing an LED and not actually balancing or keeping an eye on the cell that it was connected to. And that was seen as a bit of an issue. So Stuart went back to the drawing board and designed this, the DIY BMS version 4. Four. And as you can see, this module, well, is considerably smaller than the modules I was using, although there was another version which was a bit smaller. Um, and he's changed quite a few things to overcome those issues. Firstly, Stuart has changed the uh, communication method here. He's now using Opto Isolated, there's the Opto there, uh, serial connection. So there's a receive connector and a transmit connector. That does mean, of course, that you need a, a loop between each and every module and controller. So from the controller to each of the modules and then at the end back to the controller again. That controller can actually now manage more than one pack for those who are interested in doing that. Stuart's moved away from one big power resistor to, uh, well, eight surface mount resistors on the board here, which of course are the, uh, is the load to reduce the voltage of the cell that this module is connected to. But one of the improvements in DIY BMS version 4 is that the uh, MOSFET which turns on these load resistors can actually be pulse width modulated to uh, reduce the load being placed on the pack. And I think primarily that is to ensure that this uh, board doesn't get too hot if these resistors are bypassing for a long time. Stuart's also changed the microcontroller down here for an AT Tiny 841 rather than the uh, AT Tiny 85, and that gives him a few more pins of I/O. But also, crucially, he's uh, running that AT Tiny 841 directly off the uh, battery voltage rather than having a DC to DC converter, and that makes this circuit considerably more efficient than the version three. And finally, this module in version 4 will work independently of the controller. So if the controller goes offline, this will still protect the cell from over voltage, for example, whereas the old version, well, it just wouldn't. Now, Stuart has also designed a PCB for the controller, which is still based on a Wemos D1 Mini. This is a, a clone, but yeah, that still would sit there for the Wi-Fi communication and, of course, the control of the whole system. Uh, but on here, you'll notice that there's a few additional components. There's an IC up here, but there are now the receive pin for the communications and the transmit pin and of course the opto isolator that's crucial but there's also a j1 2 3 and 4 now that's because you can connect relays to this board one of those standard relay modules yes yeah, something like this or in fact a four channel version can be connected now to the controller and within the software you can decide to turn relays on and off based on quite a few different parameters. So if your whole pack is going over voltage, well, you could switch a relay that turns off the charger, or if you're going under voltage, switch a different relay off and turn off your inverter. So this is now becoming a really full BMS product. So the DIY BMS does balancing. It's got under voltage protection. It's got over voltage protection. And it's got a comprehensive monitor as well. Seems perfect, doesn't it? But there's still possibly an improvement I could see. Perhaps I am being a bit pernickety. But the problem with most battery management systems is these, the load resistors. They do 
waste energy. Well, that's what they're designed to do. They're designed to burn off some of that excess energy to make sure cells are kept in balance. But of course, that's also wasteful. And I did find this module a few weeks back on eBay, and I can see that uh, Julian Eilert also found it. So I'm not going to do a demo of this, but this active battery cell balancing module does things in a slightly different way. This is a 4S, 4 cells in series battery balancing module. So it has three identical circuits. So at the midpoint between each cells, there is this circuit on this balancing module. And these circuits are designed to transfer power from one cell to another, but they can do it both to the more positive cell and from the more positive cell down to the lower cell. So these can transfer that power in, well, two directions. These are bi-directional. And in theory, this should be considerably more efficient than using power resistors and creating a lot of heat. You'll see there's no power resistors on this circuit whatsoever and equally no heat sinks this should be fairly efficient and also these apparently can move up to 1.2 amps i believe it is um, and presumably well that varies depending on the voltage difference between the cells what a clever little module well going back to our table here the active balancing module well it just does balancing doesn't it really none of the other features so it's not really a battery management system more of a battery balancing system but i do wonder whether i could incorporate its features of active balancing with the diy bms now that simply could be attaching them both to my uh, life epo 4 cells at the same time if the quiescent current of both of these is so low well both of them could be working this could be actively balancing all the time but if it struggles for one reason or another the diy bms would kick in and bypass the cell so most of the time i'm efficiently balancing my pack and in the case of a, a, a out of normal parameters situation well, the DIY BMS would also kick in. The DIY BMS will give me the monitoring, the undervolt and the overvolt protection using external relays, or like I have at the moment, a solar charge controller. So perhaps with Stuart Pittaway's excellent improvements to the DIY BMS and this little active balancing module, well, there's a chance I might have a really good battery management system, which remains pretty efficient. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.